Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figaro and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855-768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. Hello, my name is Ashley Dawkins, legal assistant at the law firm of Figueroa and Associates and your presenter with this week's immigration news. We begin with New York, where New York City Council passes landmark Bill of Rights for immigrant workers. The New York City Council passed landmark legislation on Thursday, establishing the city's first workers' Bill of Rights, a victory for immigrant workers. The bill, which was first introduced by Brooklyn Council member Shahana Hanif in May, would require multiple city departments as well as community and labor organizations to create a workers' bill of rights that would detail the rights and protection workers are guaranteed under federal, state, and local laws regardless of their immigration status. New York City Mayor Eric Adams says, everything is on the table in migrant crisis. As migrants continue to pour into New York City at a rapid rate, Mayor Eric Adams says everything is on the table to mitigate the crisis. In a single week this month, 4,000 migrants rolled into Manhattan, a rising tide of humanity that is sending the Adams administration into retreat. Mayor Eric Adams admitted on Tuesday that he's unable to hold it back. When it comes down to the migrant asylum seekers, I cannot elevate enough the point that everything is on the table, Adams said. For months, the administration has struggled to find emergency housing and the money to pay for it. More recently, the city has imposed 30 and 60 day limits. The mayor is determined of when migrant tent cities on the streets and in public parks as seen in other cities. No child and no family will sleep on the streets, he said. That is my number one goal, preventing that from happening. I see what is happening in other cities. Sleeping in precincts, sleeping on streets, tents all over the cities. I don't want that to turn into our city. Meanwhile, mayors meet with senior White House officials over migrant influx Thursday. The mayors of Denver and Chicago met with senior White House officials on Thursday to discuss the influx of migrants' arrivals in their cities, according to a White House spokesperson. Over the last year, the White House has come under increasing criticism from local officials across the country over the growing number of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border, which has stressed relationships with Democratic states. Tom Perez, the White House Intergovernmental Affairs Director, has been in close touch with mayors in recent months were concerned over the growing number of migrant arrivals in their cities and the strain it's placed on limited resources. The mayors met with Paris and White House Chief of Staff Jeff Zients while at the White House Thursday. According to a source familiar with the meeting New York City Mayor Eric Adams was invited to but never attended. The mayor is returning to New York City to address a matter. These meetings will be rescheduled as soon as possible, a spokesperson for the mayor told CNN. Adams headed back to New York upon learning of the FBI raid of the home of his top fundraiser, Brianna Suggs. U.S. to offer economic benefits for countries hosting migrants, shore up supply chains. The United States on Friday, November 3rd, announced new development financing for countries hosting migrants in the Western Hemisphere as part of an effort to curb migrant arrivals in the U.S.-Mexico border and expand economic cooperation in the region. Senior U.S. officials told Reuters, President Joe Biden convened leaders from Latin America and the Caribbean at the White House to discuss economic issues and migration to the American Partnership for Economic Prosperity Leader Summit. The summit follows a similarly themed meeting of Western Hemisphere leaders in Los Angeles last year, part of a broader push aimed at strengthening regional economic ties and reducing China's influence in the region. The White House said leaders from Barbados, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Peru, and Uruguay attended Friday's gathering as well as representatives from Mexico and Panama. But already, Venezuela has been a topic of discussion. The increase in migration and upcoming elections in Venezuela opened the door for the administration to move forward with a new set of actions. After months of internal policy debates, including skepticism from Biden, the administration softened its stance on Venezuela and began to peel back the sanctions imposed under the Trump administration. 
In other news, a new report reveals Haitians face racist treatment during U.S. immigration processing. Research shows systematic flaws with systems of humanitarian parole and employment authorization documents, a legacy of racist immigration practices towards Haitian refugees. Haitian Women for Haitian Refugees in partnership with Take Root Justice will release results from interviews conducted with Haitian and their legal advocates. The interviews revealed the Haitian refugees, asylum seekers, and migrants have been granted humanitarian parole periods that were effectively meaningless because they provided insufficient time to apply for employment authorization, leaving Haitians in the agonizing position of being unable to provide for themselves and their families as they navigate their immigration cases. And finally, Biden-Harris Administration Executive Order directs DHS to lead the responsible development of artificial intelligence. On October 30th, 2023, President Biden issued a landmark executive order to promote the safe, secure, and trustworthy development and use of artificial intelligence. The Biden-Harris administration places the highest urgency on governing the development and use of AI safely and responsibly, and is therefore advancing a coordinated federal government-wide approach to do so. The Department of Homeland Security will play a critical part in ensuring that AI use is safe and secure nationwide. DHS's own use of AI will be achieved responsibly while advancing equity and appropriately safeguarding privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. Thank you. Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figueroa and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855 855- 768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com.